Hey, what's up? This is Gizmo, and today we're going to talk about the much rumored iPhone 5. iPhone 5. Usually, what happens for the iPhones for the past four versions, they announced the phone in the first week of June at the developers' conference, and then you know, shortly after, two weeks after, maybe three weeks, in the middle of June, end of June, first week in July, they release the new version of the iPhone. It happened with the iPhone 1, 2, 3, and 4. And uh, now we're coming up to the 5, and there are rumors going around that the iPhone will not come out this June, and it will not be announced in the first week of June that it will in fact be announced in September when they hold the regular iPod event which happens every year and uh, basically what they're going to do is announce that release that shortly after which would be mid-September end of September or early October um, that's a long time from now uh, for people that are anxious on you know getting the new version you're going to have to wait a few more months there are a few things that line up with the rumor. Number one, usually the iOS, the new major version, has happened with 3.0, 4.0. They get announced usually March, April at the latest. You know, they show you the iOS, the, the new developments, the new software, what's, you know, what the new features are, and it gives the developers some time, three months exactly, to, you know, work on the new things, implement it into their apps so it's ready for launch on the new iPhone which comes out in June. So you have April, May, June, you get the three months of the developers to work on this new iOS and uh, you know, they have it ready to go. But now, we have not heard of iOS 5, we have never seen anything on it and it's April right now and um, there's no plans for a meeting to unveil the software and What's supposed to happen is the software will be unveiled instead of the iPhone 5 in the first week of June. So the developers conference is hinting at something for the iOS. Basically it's going to have new features, we're going to get into them, and uh, you know, rumored features of course, but we'll see what happens with the software. But if it's announced in June, you have you know, June, July, August, you have three months, and then it comes out in September. So, you know, it lines up with exactly what they're doing, just three months pushed back. Um, also, you know, with supply shortages with the Japan earthquake, you know, there's certain screens and LCD things and you know, battery issues, stuff like that, that it gives them more time to, you know, build up their supply. Um, obviously, they weren't anticipating the earthquake. That's the release date for the iPhone. It's going to come out end of September, October, somewhere around that line, give or take a couple weeks. Now we're going to talk about some of the rumored features for the iPhone 5. Rumored features. Don't you hate when you're playing Angry Birds or any other app, watching a video, and you get this annoying pop-up text message, or you get this annoying alert that interrupts your entire game. You, know, you have to hit close, you have to either reply, you have to hit pause and you gotta come back to the game, get back into the game, and it's just annoying. It's so obtrusive. The notification system sucks on the iPhone and the iOS needs to fix it. What they did a while back they hired some people that worked on the Palm Web OS notification thing, which is beautiful, it's amazing, it's very unobtrusive, it's as, as if you have, you know, something slide up, pop up all you have to do it doesn't you know come in your face and stop you and you have to click here to get back to me that would be an amazing feature for the iPhone iOS 5 hopefully they'll put that in there I'm sick of these interruption pop-ups interrupting my angry birds now with the whole 4G LTE thing you know the whole transition to Verizon and now it's on both carriers this opens up you know big doors for speed and enhancements on the iPhone Apple usually doesn't jump on board right away with you know the new technology. It took them a long time to go 3G when all the other phones were 3G. Um, right now, there's a lot of 4G phones coming out. Verizon is all about LTE, which is their 4G. Um, AT&T is pushing their 4G, which has you know great speed already. Um, and 
giving this time change, it gives them a few more months to, you know, expand their networks on both AT&T and Verizon. I don't think Apple is going to want to, uh, you know, release one product that has 4G and one product that's kind of not really there with the 4G yet. Um, so we may or may not see this LTE iPhone 5. I'm not really, you know, putting my money on that bet right there, but um, you, know, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what's up Apple's sleeve. You know, they don't give us all the features we want with one phone. They always keep you, you know, waiting, wanting more, wanting to upgrade. So we'll see what happens with that. There's also been a couple images floating around on the internet of an iPod Touch, which will also get refreshed in the fall and has been refreshed since the very beginning every fall season. Um, but it has a capacitive home screen button. They're removing that actual physical button and it's just going to be, you know, a button like you see on the Android devices. It's just like it blends right in with the glass and you could just tap it and, you know, maybe it'll vibrate or something. Um, we'll see what happens with that. The image could be photoshopped, we're not sure. Um, so we'll have to see. That's one rumor for the iPhone 5 to have a capacitive home screen button. Another is something that Android is all about. They're pushing it. This is going to be, uh, I think it's going to be pretty big. Uh, I don't know if Apple is jumping on board quite yet again with this technology, but it's NFC, Near Field Communication. Basically what you have is uh, a chip inside your phone and instead of, you know, those annoying ugly barcodes you see on like posters and stuff and, you know, ads, you have to open up an app, take a picture of it, the app translates it, takes you to a website. By that time I could have just typed in the website that's right above the barcode and, um, you know, it's just kind of pointless to me. I'm not really a big fan of that. So NFC, what that is, uh, is a chip inside your phone. Basically, if you have, you know, a poster here of something and uh, you just bring your phone up and as long as you're in that certain near field communication, it will send, you know, whatever you need sent to your phone. Um, it would obviously work, if, you know, movie posters if, if you hold it up to the, you know, basically like bump it, that type of thing. but. You just hold it up to the poster and then, you know, you could go to the website, watch the movie trailer, stuff like that. If you want to do business card information, you could do that and it just takes the information, right, and adds a contact. It's really cool. What you can do is payments, you know, you just wave your iPhone and, you know, you can do payments with that. Android devices are already jumping on board with NFC. It's really cool. Um, it beats opening an app, taking a picture, translating the barcode, you know, opening up Safari. It's just too much work. So uh, hopefully NFC will be put into the iPhone 5. Rumor has it that it's not actually going to make it to this version and we'll see what happens. Remember the video we did about the white iPhone? Well, it's been almost a year and the white iPhone is still not here. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. There's so many problems they're having with it with the paint with light leaking and it's just a whole manufacturing nightmare. But apparently, finally, after a whole bunch of set release dates, um, iPhone, the white iPhone 4 is supposed to come out. Obviously, it's going to come out as an iPhone 5. Um, you know, white iPhone will be fixed and ready to go. Um, personally, I just think they should just wait. Um, it's just been crazy, but I guess people really want it. I really wanted it to help me back from getting the iPhone 4. Uh, it's just been, you know, a nightmare. I'm sure. I'm sure a lot of you people out there want the white one, and you know, you waited and you're stuck with your 3GS. So, you know, it's no fun, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens with the white iPhone. Another thing I hate on the iPhone is the multitasking, which is uh, pretty useless to me. You know, you double click here and you go through whatever you have running in the background, and. Uh, Pretty much you could just have this long list of all these apps running forever and ever. Apps that don't really need to run in the background like the phone. What's the point of having the phone run in the multitasking bar when it's right here at all times and it pretty much does the same thing? Um, you know, you go to your home screen, double click here, and it's pretty much the same thing. Why do I have to X out of the, the phone app? Same with text messaging, you have these texts here, you gotta come back. Um, the iPod, all these certain things that are just annoying and useless. 
There are certain apps that should just quit when you're done with them, you know, like the camera, like the settings. There's no, you don't go back to anything, you know, it's pretty much the same thing every time you open it. Um, we don't need all these apps running and multitasking, so I think the multitasking needs a whole new rework, it needs to be figured out where you don't have to, you know, flick through all these things and quit them one by one, which is so annoying. Um, I'd rather just come back up to the screen and tap, you know, the browser where I'm back at. Uh, I don't have to click through here and scroll all the way through here just to find my friggin' web browser. Now the iPhone 4 already takes great pictures, but what can it do better? How can you upgrade it? Well, this rumor, actually a slip up from a Sony CEO, said that they're using Sony technology, Sony lenses in the new iPhone 5 to create an 8 megapixel camera. Uh, having a Sony lens inside an iPhone would be pretty freaking cool. Um, Sony is uh, um, shooting on a Sony right now. They have great products, great quality image, and um, I would love to see what happens with that. Some people also complained about the Omnivision sensor cameras which are currently in the iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4, which are a 5 megapixel camera and a 3.2 megapixel camera. People would complain about a yellowish color shift in their photos shot with the Omnivision sensor camera. So Apple might be moving to Sony for its next generation iPhone camera sensors. So we may see a Sony Exmor R camera sensor put into the iPhone 5, which is featured on the Sony Xperia Arc and another Xperia phone uh, through Sony. They make great cameras, so I'm really excited to see how this works. There are also a few sources familiar with the matter saying that the iPhone 5 will look similar to the iPhone 4. It will have a faster processor, obviously bump specs, but it will look pretty much the same. Uh, slight tweaks, we don't know about this antenna nightmare with the side, remember all that craziness. Um, if they figured that out, worked that out, uh, you know, obviously just going to have to throw a case on it if that's the case again. Case, case. Another rumor featured is the edge-to-edge -edge screen. As you can see here in this leaked image of at the actual, you know, piece of plastic that goes over the screen, um, you're going to have the screen that's going to go from edge to edge uh, this way on your screen. Um, I don't know if it's going to be, I guess, a little bigger this way, but you can see here that the screen goes all the way to the edge of the iPhone rather than having that little gap in between. So we'll see what happens if this image is legit. Um, this is what's circulating, circulating around the web, so we'll see what, what goes on with that. There's a lot of big screen phones out there, so a little edge to edge will actually give it a little more space, real estate. We'll see what happens if it has, you know, something for the notifications, who knows. Storage options, obviously we're going to have 16 gig, 32 gig. Are we going to see a 64 gig around this time? Uh, a lot of people have really high quality videos apps are getting bigger, you know, games have, you know, they're larger in megabyte size, so obviously our space is starting to get limited for certain things, so we may see a 64 gigabyte iPhone, uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to get rid of the 8 gigabyte because, you know, you never know, but it makes it an affordable option, so Apple might keep that, um, you know, we'll see what happens with the iPhone 5, I'm excited about it. I don't think it's going to have too many major features like the iPhone 4 kind of did, having a whole new design, better camera, FaceTime, you know, all that type of thing. Uh, I think it's just going to be kind of like a 3GS, it's going to be specs are bumped, um, you know, it's going to be smaller enhancements, but it's still going to be worth the upgrade and, uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens in September when it gets announced and hopefully it'll come out in September. Not October, because I don't want to wait no more. I hate waiting. I'm not patient. <sighs> so yeah, that's our gizmo update about the iPhone 5. If you have any questions, shoot us a comment. If you have any rumors that you've heard about the iPhone 5, leave a comment, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, and uh, we hope to talk to you soon. Keep you updated, and that's about it. So check you later. Gizmo out.